Thank you. Um, hopefully everyone can see my screen. Um, this is a uh, slightly larger point cloud than, than the first demonstration. And what I want to do is uh, kind of show a, a slightly more in-depth view of, of kind of the process uh, from point cloud to deliverable. And here you can see it's just a standard uh, PCG file. And the first thing that you usually need to do is um, make sure that you have your catalog loaded. And this is uh, what Oliver was talking about with the edit KPM. Uh, this here is, is one of the files that we'll provide. You can see on the left we have catalog components. And on the right we have what's known as the active set. Uh, the active set is actually the patterns that are in the drawing uh, to be recognized. So you can actually filter this out. You can take out sizes or components that you don't need. Uh, it's, it's really a matter of, of what you need for that exact pro project. And also you can see here, here on the right we have insulation thicknesses. And these are uh, saved in this file and can be used throughout the whole project. And uh, it is a text readable file, so you can just load and save, put them on the network, anyone can see it. Uh, it's, it's a pretty, uh, pretty simple process. At any time, if you need to add a component, uh, you can actually go here, add elbow, for example and give it the parameters here, or you can actually read it directly off of the cloud, uh, in which case it will just ask you for a few points, and then uh, it'll extract the pattern from the data. From there, the, uh, the next step would be uh, your parameters, and you have your, your two sets of units. You'll have your um, scan units, or your point cloud units, and you'll have the units of the catalog pieces. Uh, in this case, they're both in inches. Uh, so that's fine, but it's important to know that you can bring in your work in metric and you won't have to do any kind of scaling or converting. We do that for you. And these are your uh, noise and average point distance parameters uh, that were touched on earlier. And we have an auto measure feature that you actually can go uh, to the cloud and extract that information from it. And what I'll do here is just clip out a, you know, small portion of a, a pipe and you can see that it will take that information for uh, from you and and what it's for is, is so that we can read the cloud better so once we know the density and the quality of that data uh, it lets us read the patterns uh, more accurately and uh, it, it leads to a better uh, a better accuracy on the measured diameter we have other parameters here uh, probably not going to go into them uh, too much detail at this time. Uh, we have a great write-up in the manual and uh, you know if there's any questions uh, during use of the software we'd be free to uh, explain this to you. Alright so really that's all you need to uh, get started and then what we can do here is uh, walk the run and again we have the choice to find a new run or continue. In this case we'll find a new run and we can do any two points on the pipe. You can see here the measured diameter is 12.8. Uh, we actually have a setting that will ask you which pipe size you intended on uh, if it falls within a certain percentage of that outside diameter. So you can actually go into your settings and, and lower that a little bit and it wouldn't ask you this at all. But here I'll choose 12 inch. You see it throws in that 12 inch pipe as far as it can extend and then it's asking you for your next step. And I actually want to take this time uh, to show an alternate workflow and, and show you how they work in conjunction. Uh, some of you are familiar with this product. Uh, this is called Planar View. Uh, it's actually a free viewer that we provide. Uh, you can download it from our website. Uh, the thing is, is that it can directly send coordinates to AutoCAD from your scan data. And you can see it's a very high quality view. Uh, almost looks like an image. Uh, this is taken directly from the scan file. But the important thing is you can actually work with both of these at the same time. So here I'll do um, specify other pipe. And if I choose a point here, you can see in AutoCAD it actually sent that coordinate to the command line. So what this lets you do is work with both at the same time, if you just want to work in AutoCAD, that's fine. If you really want to have a high-quality view, 
uh, to see the selection, or maybe you really need a precision on that point, you can use planar view in conjunction with it. And normally people would probably use uh, you know dual monitor setup or something like that, so it works really well for that. And here you see uh, I actually have a lot of items loaded in the catalog. That's where you get these choices. I kind of wanted to show you uh, the difference between semi-automation and full automation. Uh, here you have all of these items here, and they have a different quality. And if you're concerned about which item it is, you can highlight, you click preview, and you can see that item placed on the cloud. So in this case, that looks like the right choice, and sort of continue and just keep going like that. And here I'll just do that again. And you can see that drew that pipe up to the, uh, the hanger there. Extend pipe to point. Now here is a good example of something that a user can come across uh, during this process. Here I want to actually run up this branch. So I do that and you can see that it only sees a concentric reducer. Now this, is, uh, this was done on purpose because I want to show how easy it is to add this component. So I go in here to the edit KPM. You can see I have a 12 by 6 inch reducing T. All I have to do is add it to the active set You'll see it here now. That means that the drawing is now recognizing that pattern. And if I continue from where I left off, do the same thing, you can see that I now have the reducing T as the option. So the, the good news is that you don't have to put in all of your components because you don't want to overload the user with choices. But if a, a situation arises where the correct component is not one of the selections. Uh, all you have to do is move it over to the active set. Then here we can do the same thing. I'll continue from the branch. You can see it's really just two points. Two points on each, uh, on each line. And you can just kind of skip through the, uh, the fittings and pipe it uh, pretty quickly. And I'll show you another little trick here. If I want to uh, get this elbow, it's actually connected to a flange, uh, but I usually just go a little further down the line uh, because the important thing is to get the correct axis. Then what we can do, let's say that pipe, uh, it's not supposed to be there. We want to draw the flange and the, the gasket and the valve first. Uh, just easily do undo, and now we're back to the elbow. And here is uh, our first chance to do uh, a manual insertion. And this actually comes into play more when you have, let's say, gaps in data or uh, it's physically not there. You don't see it in the point cloud, but you know that item's there. Uh, there's many situations where these, the laser scanner itself has blocked access or access to, to the, the item that you need. Uh, you can simply add in a fitting manually. And this is a, a weld neck flange, for example, and you have a choice to insert by hub or face. Here I'll just do hub. And it'll actually follow my mouse uh, where I want to insert it. I can hit escape to do the uh, default insertion, but what I'll do here is actually go back into planar view, just so you can see that uh, it's a good opportunity to get a high quality point of that weld. Now, picking this point here doesn't just pick this point because this is on the surface of the piping. What it does is it takes that point and it triangulates it with the axis of the pipe run to make sure that you get that perfect center point, not just the point on the outside of the object. It's very important to note. So here I have a, a gasket coming up, and, and we're just going to do a couple of manual insertions just to finish out this uh, assembly. And 
And here I'll just finish it off with the uh, webmec flange, bring it in by face. Now just a pipe. Okay. Now you see that these items have gaps. They don't quite match. Uh, they're kind of all over the uh, the point cloud, and that's really uh, the strength of Walk the Run, uh, because we're not really worried about the user being accurate on the connection points. Uh, we really just want them to tell us which components are on the line and what order do do those can come in at. And then at the end, uh, we use the apply constraints. And what you can do with that. You just select any object on the run. You should see the entire run highlight. That lets you know that they're all linked successfully. And then from there, apply constraints. You can see a, a very good example was the way that this uh, flange valve assembly matched up to the pipe and kind of went back to where the data was. And you can see everything there is flush and very accurate to the data. So for some people, that's enough. Uh, you just need the model. Uh, some other people, they, they need to take this into uh, their own product, maybe um, you know, Plant 3D, AutoPlan, CADWorks, things like that, uh, for, for more in-depth uh, deliverables. So what we can do is, is this export command. And it's pretty simple. You just choose uh, any pipe on the run. And you can see at the uh, command line, created 16 objects. I can show you that a little better if I uh, turn off the main layer. You can see here every item is labeled. And more importantly, you have your starting and end points and center points if needed uh, for every fitting along the line. This is a standard AutoCAD uh, 3D polyline, which is important because that makes it uh, very easy to export into other products. As we all know, a DWG format and AutoCAD objects are uh, very common, and, and most programs can bring them in. So what most people would do is take this center line into their piping product and then uh, trace over it uh, with the snap points in place. Or you can actually use maybe a line to pipe or, or a routing command uh, to create the, the components that way. Okay, Oliver, I'll, I'll go ahead and send it back to you.